Since life first sprung from the primordial ooze, evolution has shaped and dictated the appearance of many forms of life to have walked the Earth. But now with the appearance of modern technology, our race is at the precipice of taking evolution into our own hands. What will things look like in the year 3017? You'll have to tune in to find out. We may not be 100% certain of what the future holds for our species, but we do know that you won't regret slamming that subscribe button and activating notifications from the hub. Monoculture With the advent of modern transportation and global communications, our world is growing smaller and smaller by the day. Although it may not always seem like it, racial boundaries and stigmas across the globe are at an all-time low and continuing to drop. As we begin to shake ourselves free of the archaic societal constructs of the colonial era, we also began to witness a boom in genetic mixing, the likes of which have never been seen before. All of this could eventually result in one single ethnic group dominating the entire world. The theory is that as different cultures continue to procreate, the familial lines converge, the main distinguishing features of their ethnicities will begin to blend, taking on characteristics from different cultures all across the world. Over time, we will witness an overall blending of skin colors, resulting in one uniform tone across all nations. Considering the vast array of genes responsible for our many distinctive traits, as many as 100 different genes for human skin color alone, this process will not happen overnight. Over the course of 100 generations, however, the old notions of defining ourselves based on race, color, or ethnicity will be a thing of the past. No more cell phones. The modern smartphone has become an absolute necessity in today's culture. Our portable supercomputers are so deeply woven into our lives that the notion of I have no idea how we existed before cell phones has become a bit of a cultural meme all of its own. So since these little technological wonders have become such an essential part of the human experience, how on earth would the citizens of the year 3017 appear to have given up on them completely? The truth is, they haven't. The phones have just gotten a whole lot smaller and a million times more advanced. This is all made possible in part by Moore's Law, a law which originated in the mind of Intel co-founder Gordon Moore. This legendary principle of the computing world dictates that the number of transistors in the fastest microprocessors will effectively double every single year. With that in mind, the current estimated number of transistors in the A8 chip, which powers Apple's iPhone 6, is about 2 billion. If advancements continue according to Moore's law, the iPhone 6000 could potentially utilize a chip with a number of transistors so large we couldn't finish listing the zeros, even if this video didn't end until the year 3017. With technology that advanced, the phones could be wired directly into our brains, which brings us to cybernetic limbs. Have you ever been super stressed out at your job or doing mundane housework and thought to yourself, gee, if only I had eight arms like an octopus, then I could get so much more finished. While this dream might be just outside of your sadly two-armed reach, your great-great-great-great-grandchildren might just be sporting any variety of extra limbs or features that they want. While the idea of prosthetic limbs has been around for centuries, the world of advanced cybernetics has only just recently begun to boom. But boy, is it booming. Only a few years ago, cybernetic limbs like the DEKA arm would run up a bill of around $100,000. But now, thanks to the explosion of advancements in the maker community, prosthetic arms and legs can be downloaded and printed using a 3D printer for less than $100 in materials. Not only does this change the game in improving lives of people who've lost or were even born without their limbs, but it opens the door to completely reimagining the human body as a whole. In 1,000 years, we could potentially see people swapping out limbs for whatever the occasion, kind of like Alex in the Deus Ex game series. Genetic Engineering Okay, so we've established engineering our large physical assets like arms and legs, but what about the manipulation of the genetic building blocks that define who we are in the first place? While the term GMO unfortunately garners a lot of negative press, the ability to manipulate the genetic code of plants and animals around us has been a commonplace practice since the dawn of agriculture. You think corn started out looking like this? It took thousands of years of selective breeding of particular traits to garner big old cobs like this bad boy. Modern genetic engineering just speeds the process up a little bit. Imagine being able to customize your baby just like in The Sims, where you can choose the exact features and skills that might help them succeed in a modern world. Before some of you grab your pitchforks though, just think about this. A vast majority of life-threatening illnesses are caused by variations in our genetic code. Improvements in genetic engineering could one day wipe these traits off the face of the earth, opening up opportunities for unimaginable lives that would have otherwise been snuffed out way too soon. While it may not exactly be in fashion today, genetic engineering may just be one of our secrets to our species' ensured survival. 
custom identity. Speaking of our species, are you familiar with the quickly growing culture of the other kin community? While some people may snicker at the idea of a human identifying as a cat or a wolf, the concept of breaking down the barriers of self-definition may very well be totally commonplace by the year 3017. When you think about the constant advancements being made in microprocessor technology, cybernetic limbs, and genetic modification, the idea of what exactly defines a human being begins to blur ever so slightly. Consider for a moment the Greek thought experiment of the ship of Theseus, which dates all the way back to 1st century CE. In this experiment, Theseus replaces part of his ship one by one, until eventually not a single original component remains. The question here how exactly to define where Theseus' ship ends and the new ship begins. The responsibility of that definition ultimately lands on the reader themselves. With that in mind, consider that the cells of a human body completely renew themselves several times over an average lifetime, even though the owner of that body may consider themselves to still be them all along. Given the tools and means, what's to say people in the distant future couldn't completely rebuild themselves from the ground up into whatever image they choose? Nanorobotics Nanorobots are teeny tiny machines that are capable of building and manipulating anything in the universe at an atomic level. Most historians agree that the concept for nanotechnology was originally explored by physicist Richard Feynman in his 1959 speech, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, where he imagined a day when machines with vast amounts of data could be shrunk down on the atomic scale. Nanorobots would have the ability to manipulate atoms just like someone might play with Lego blocks, constructing anything from basic atomic materials like oxygen, carbon, or other elements. While the idea of these teeny little robots moving around atoms and constructing new molecules might sound completely impossible, just keep in mind that our very bodies are filled and maintained by an army of countless nanobots. That's right, the trillions upon trillions of cells in our body are essentially tiny machines programmed with functions like building proteins or carrying material from one point to another. The nanorobotics of the future, however, could see entire clouds or swarms of nanobots capable of constructing or destroying anything that the programmers see fit. In 1,000 years, all of our houses, monuments, and even skyscrapers could actually consist of quintillions of these tiny, smart nanomachines, making the idea of those noisy construction sites a thing of the past. Digital Brains So now we've reached the point where people can choose their own body parts, select their own genetic makeup, and potentially rebuild their bodies from the ground up as any creature or being they desire. What is the one thing that has remained constant throughout the whole process? Some people call it the soul. Others refer to it as the psyche, the id, the ego, and much, much more. What we're ultimately referring to is that squishy ball of gray matter between your ears called the brain. Currently, the intricacies of the human brain are still very far from being completely understood, but not for long. At the most basic level, the human brain is very similar to a computer. There are sections that hold physical data like memories and sections that process that data and sections that interpret those processes into everyday motor functions like walking, talking, or breathing. People have worked tirelessly to understand and ultimately reconstruct human brains for ages, hindered only by the slow march of technology. Someday though, even as soon as the mid to late 21st centuries, according to some scientists, we could finally crack the code on what makes us tick. And once we've done that, what's to stop us from recreating our own minds within the context of a machine? Artificial Intelligence Hollywood would have you imagine that artificial intelligence, commonly referred to as AI, could spell the downfall of humanity. Directors like James Cameron and Stanley Kubrick have painted AIs as murderous, bloodthirsty killing machines with one goal, and one goal only, to eradicate the human race. From a purely biological human point of view, yeah, that's pretty darn evil. The morality of real-world artificial intelligence in the future is a little more ambiguous, however. Once we've unlocked the ability to create exact digital duplicates of our own brains, those of us who are so inclined will essentially no longer require our original bodies, opting instead to exist in an entirely digital realm. Although our thought patterns and sense of identity will remain intact, we will essentially evolve into artificially intelligent life forms. Those of us that make the decision to transfer our consciousness will suddenly find ourselves to exist in millions of locations at once, limited only by the cumulative technological progress of our race and the speed of light itself. You could beam yourself all the way into a Mars rover or Android in just under four minutes. No longer restricted by our biological limits, humanity would explode into the universe, free to inhabit it in any way it sees fit. Immortality at this point, our consciousnesses will be free to travel the universe in whatever way we see fit. We'll be able to copy ourselves, co-mingle with other minds, and fling ourselves across the stars without so much as a second thought. 
The only thing we will be limited by, however, are the fundamental laws of the universe, special relativity to be exact. One of the most frustrating aspects of our universe to sci-fi fans across the globe is the fact that absolutely nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. The full explanation for this could take up a whole series of videos, but to put it in the simplest terms, faster than light travel would basically mean traveling back in time. The problem with traveling back in time is that you would instantly break the law of causality, cause and effect, which would essentially bring the whole universe to a screeching halt. The solution to this problem, however, is already staring us in the face. Once we evolve into digital beings, we don't need to worry about time, because we would never technically die. Suddenly, a journey that would take 20,000 years would be just as meaningless as a trip around the block. Not here at all. Yes, it's grim and altogether frightening to consider, but there are many geniuses like Stephen Hawking that believe humanity won't actually make it to the year 3017. Whether it's through war, famine, climate change, or disease, there's a strong possibility that the creatures we know as human beings will be completely wiped out before the beginning of the 31st century. In the context of historical evolution, however, this is no different than the fact that Homo habilis or the Neanderthals no longer walk the Earth. We will simply adapt and grow in whatever ways are necessary in order to prolong our existence in the universe. Whether that's by genetically modifying ourselves in order to survive harsher climates or building entirely new bodies, we'll find a way to survive and procreate. So no, Homo sapiens may not inhabit the Earth in 1,000 years, but our descendants certainly will. And while that may be frightening to some, the ability to adapt and grow in our environment has been the key defining characteristic of our species since our ancestors walked on two legs. As long as we keep that up, we'll always be a little human after all. How humans are likely to evolve, only time will tell. We hope you enjoyed this video. We're always evolving at The Hub to bring you the most interesting facts from around the world. So make sure to subscribe and give us a like while you're at it. We'll see you next time.